Last week you released a song via Twitter, Planet No One Knows, which had a pretty strong anti-racism message in it. Can you tell us why you made that song and was there an incident that inspired it or why did you feel it was important to make that song? Well, um, last year I was with a few friends of mine from various like races and nationalities and stuff like Harry O'Brien from Collingwood Football Club and the boys from D'Afrix and um, I posted a picture on my Facebook yeah. just because we were working to all hanging out together and then I came back I actually mentioned it in the song I came back like 10 minutes later and there was just a barrage of racist comments just the most hideous things like the most disgusting things people could say they were saying it and they, yeah. were, they were young they were young Australians like a lot of them it was really really disheartening and really disappointing like it, it pissed me off and it really upset me and it's and that since then I've just not I've really started taking a notice to what what stuff's been said to people and like how how ignorantly racist a lot of Australia is and they don't really know they are being racist you know what I mean do you think this is a problem especially with Australian hip hop fans or music fans in general or Australia in general a lot of Australian hip hop fans only like Australian hip hop and they're like if if something american comes in they're like Fuck that american bullshit or you know, they, it's, they're very patriotic and I think it's, that's the mentality of a lot of Australians. And one thing that like in the song, I, I talk about it, but I don't mean every Australian, you know, I don't mean anyone that has a Southern Cross tattoo is racist. I mean that if you see a bunch of people with Southern Cross tattoos and stuff like that, it's just a shame now that you can assume that there's got, some of them are going to be racist. So how was the song received? What, what, are the, what sort of reaction have you had to it? Um, I've had mixed reactions like I've had a lot of positivity and a lot of people saying good on you for doing it and standing up to that and a lot of people you know a lot of people saying F you you know we're not racist Australia's not a racist country you know and it's, it's funny I've seen a lot of comments saying like it's it's only an issue because we keep talking about it if we didn't talk about it then it wouldn't be an issue anymore which is not how I see it at all. Right. I just think people need to be educated more. Like I think it's just a lot of it's ignorance and being uneducated to the fact that certain things that you say you might not be meaning it to be racist, but it is. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, you released a great collaboration with uh, Daniel Johns from Silverchair Impossible, which is in in the charts at the moment. Yep. Um, great song. Tell us how that came about. Who contacted who and what was it like working with Daniel? Daniel's, Daniel's brother Heath is my publicist. Pub, yeah, so we, we contacted him and I said I'd always wanted to work with Daniel. And ever since I heard the song that he did for Qantas, I don't know if you've heard that, he, he wrote the Qantas song, it's amazing. And ever since I heard that I was like, I would love to get his vocals on a track, like a hip hop track and stuff. And then he said it was a long shot to get Daniel down and then he contacted Daniel and Daniel was interested. And we were originally just gonna write the song. He was just gonna write, he wasn't gonna sing on it. And then the song turned out like how it did. So we were like, it's, it's gotta stay Daniel. Excellent. Mm. And obviously it marked a little bit of a different direction for you, which is why a lot of people got excited. Is, is that a sign of things to come for you and uh, you know that you'll go down a, a bit more of a dubstep electronic path or it's funny it's not like no no songs on the album are like that song at all but um one thing i think people were expecting with this album was for me to come out with something like i don't know very poppy or dancey like a real radio song but for the first song i just wanted to come out with something really unexpected and taking a few risks and just drop something really polarizing like impossible was you know what i mean and and something that's not for radio you know it was definitely not a radio song it's just something that's a bit like whoa a bit gritty and edgy and stuff and you're supporting Eminem on a really huge tour in stadiums coming up in February are you looking forward to that tell us what you're feeling about that I'm quite nervous to be honest like I don't I've never really been nervous for performing or anything like that but I've never been sober like at the moment I'm completely sober and clean so Perform, like I'm sort of jumping in the deep end performing at the Eminem concerts to 50,000 people. Like these are going to be the first shows that I'm doing sober. So it's, I'm kind of nervous, but I'm, I'm wrapped. I'm, it's going to be great, especially that I won't be, I won't be intoxicated so I can take everything in and, and, you know, enjoy it. And it's going to be great. And you're going to be uh, playing a lot of the new material? 
Uh, I'm not going to be doing like a whole new set of um, new stuff, but I'm going to be playing some new songs in there definitely. Yeah. Any chance of Daniel joining you? <laughs> oh, possibly. Yeah. I know that we've definitely got one guest who's coming on the whole tour with me. Keep it.